once a giant, always a giant. For me, it's only a giant. So check it out. The D6 Squad has merch now. We got hoodies, tees, mugs, whatever you need. Check it out. Link in the description. What's going on, YouTube? Thank you, 546. I just want to get this out of the way because I see a lot of people saying that the Giants need to target Gregory Rousseau. There are a lot of reasons why the Giants should not be targeting Gregory Rousseau. And there's a lot of reasons why teams in general in that first round should not be targeting Gregory Rousseau. So when you look at him, he's 6'7". He's listed at 253. I'll give him some extra weight. He's, he's been off four season. He opted out. Maybe he's 260 something now. He he's not he's not uh he's not 300 pounds. He he's somewhere in between 250 and probably 270. Maybe you know when he gets his NFL weight, he's like 272. Fine, cool. Um, the thing with Gregory Rousseau is he does not have the physical skill set, the physical skill set to play outside linebacker. Uh, he could maybe play a 4-3 defensive end. That might work for him, but definitely not outside linebacker. And when you look at his production, most of it came from the interior of the defensive line, which is a problem because at six foot seven, you'll have no leverage along that defensive line. And at 260 pounds, you don't have the power to play inside on a defensive line in the NFL. So let's watch. Uh, he's number 15 right here. He's lined up where it looks like a three tech. Uh, pretty sure from this angle, it looks like a three. Possibly where he could be lining up in a three, four, somewhere around here, but he doesn't really, he can't really play inside. But let's just watch him. He's at three tech. He's going to get off the ball and he's, he does a good job. He tries to get cut. They tried to cut him. He just jumps over, steps over with his long legs and just comes up and gets the sack. I don't know why they they this is something I don't like about college. They'll have entire plays where their entire offensive line just tries to cut block. But anyway, he just steps over that and he gets the sack. Fine. This is where most of his production came from. Not saying that he didn't earn it inside. This was one of his easier sacks, but you'll see as we go along. And now we see Rousseau lined up right around the same thing, right at the three tech, except this time on the other side. And what he's going to do is pretty much what he always does in the inside. He uses his speed. He uses his length. And he's able to just shed these interior offensive linemen. Just disengages and just slithers past them. Which, I mean, it's, it's almost funny because he just turned to the side, that play. He just turned to the side and just kind of just slithered through that double team that they tried to, that they tried to, they tried to double team him there. He just slipped through there and just came up with the sack. And the long arms are definitely a factor. They're definitely a factor because he reaches out and just grabs this dude by his ankle and takes him down. I mean, a lot of people don't reach that. So what I'm going to show you is, first off, this is 2020. This is Jalen Phillips. And this is my problem with Gregory Russo. He cannot do this. This is not his body type. He does not have this explosion. He can't he can't play this position. It, it's not going to work out for him. He, he's, he's not able to move side to side. He doesn't have the suddenness that someone like Jalen Phillips has. So let's watch Jalen Phillips get off the ball compared to what you've seen. Because what I've shown you looks like just regular interior defensive line play. He's beating people, but he's not quick. He's not sudden. But let's just watch Jalen Phillips come off the ball compared to what we've seen. He comes off the ball, and he's he's already got enough depth to where if the quarterback steps up, he's in his lap. He immediately is able to, to really put pressure on this tackle because he's really giving him that vertical presence. Gets upfield, converts the speed to power, and then you want to see him cross over here, which he does, and the ball gets thrown. But... When you watch someone like they come off the ball and you compare that to Rousseau, which I'll get to in a couple of minutes, it's just night and day. It's really night and day. Especially from a standing position. When you're 6'7", you're not going to be able to get out of a standing position and really rush. So right here, I want to show you another play. My favorite edge rusher, Aziz Ojolari, in this draft. 
uh, number 13 here. He circled. Watch how he comes off the ball. Watch how he just gets off the ball and, and, and bends. And this is another thing that Russo has a problem with because of his height. He doesn't have the ankle flexibility, and he just can't get low enough. He's going to drop his hips, bend this corner, and instead of Aziz Ojolari being all the way back here because he couldn't bend, he has a shot at the quarterback. And he forces a fumble. So this is just to show you the, the physical difference between three, four outside linebackers that are pass rushers and someone who, who doesn't belong at that position. So on this play, you're going to see him come off the ball right here. He's right here, number 15. Let me take it back just a little bit. You're going to see him come off the ball, and he's just going to be too high. He's going to be too high, and he's not able to really attack one half. He doesn't have the quickness to get outside, so he tries to go through him. And this is what he normally tries to do, and sometimes it works in college. He's so physically strong for his size, sometimes that works in college. But in the NFL, he's not going to be able to out-physical these tackles with this raw strength that he has because everybody has raw strength. Everybody has raw strength, and they're going to have leverage. They're going to be lower than him, and they're going to be able to get in his chest. So let's watch. He's just going to stand him up. He's too high. This is, this is exactly what you want as an offensive lineman. He's standing directly up. He has no power. He can't get his arms extended. Every single strength about Greg Rousseau at this point is neutralized. Now, this is a quick throw. This is a pretty quick throw. But this rep is already won. And this is another example. He's over here on the right side of the screen. And he's just entirely too slow for me coming off the football. And it's going to get even slower if he's standing up. So he's going to come out of a three-point stance here. And I just don't like this. You need to be... Rousseau at this point should be right here. He should be attacking a side of him. He should pick a side. He needs to be using his long arms, getting those arms in this dude's chest. But he comes off and he just stutter steps. And I understand in college you have to be aware to run. You have to be aware to run. Sure. But... He does not get to the passer. He does not really apply a, pr a pressure here. The pressure comes from inside and the other side. Next play, 15 right here again, coming off the football. He's going to stutter, stutter. And he's like, you're stuttering before you've even made con. It's like he does not have a plan for what he's going to do when he gets to, to the blocker. He's stuttering and he's standing straight up. And he's not able to sink his hips because an elite edge rusher or an edge rusher with a better body type uh, coming off the edge is going to be able to sink his hips and almost be able to just bend this corner directly to the quarterback. But he's standing straight up. And sure, the dude ends up falling. But we all see that's because he tripped over the other offensive lineman. You're, you're not going to bend the corner at 6'4". <laughs> He's 6'7". He's probably right now at about 6'4". You're not going to be able to bend the corner like that. And then I'll show you this play here. He's going to come off the football again. Again, and not the quickest coming off the ball. And he makes it look a lot more quick than it is because of his long legs. He takes that one step inside that makes it look, look more explosive than it is. But he hasn't really covered much ground. First off, he takes too many steps before he takes that move. He tries to come inside, and it's blocked up. The, the movement that you see from Rousseau is of a defensive lineman. It's of a defensive lineman. The, the long strides, these, these, these strides are too slow, and it allows offensive linemen to be able to react. Watch how he comes off the ball, starts outside, and the offensive lineman steps outside. He actually goes with him outside. And then he crosses over, and the offensive lineman is easily able to, to not even move his feet much and get back inside on him. And they do a good job passing his stunt off. But other than that, he's able to pretty much stay with them. So, like I said, 
if Rousseau was doing this and he was moving like this and he was about 310 or even 296 or something like that, then he'd be a prospect to really look at. Now, he's not the most technically sound, which also scares you on the inside because you need hands to play on the inside. But if he had those raw skills and was moving like this at this, you know, at like 290 something or heavier because he's 6'7", then I, he's got my attention. But the fact that he has pretty much the movement of a three-tech defensive defensive lineman or a 3-4 defensive end, and he's 250-something pounds, that's just not going to work. It's just not going to work in this system. And as I've said multiple times, I don't root for anybody to fail. If Greg Rousseau ends up being a superstar, it will be in a 4-3 defense, playing defensive end. And that will be because, one, he worked on his technique. He worked on his hands. He worked on using his long arms. Look at his arm. <laughs> his arm is literally the, the, the length of this dude's leg. If he can somehow consistently get his hands inside or get an arm right in between the five and the six, he's going to be a problem. But it's going to be a defensive end. He is not sudden enough to come off the ball from a standing position and get any pressure on the quarterback. It's not going to happen. He's not a power rusher because he's not big enough. He's not a speed rusher because he's not quick enough. So you tell me, where does he go? Because his production comes from the interior where he has the speed advantage, where he's around, he's around here or around here or around here. He, he has the speed advantage. That's fine. But when you don't, it just, I don't see where he fits. So Giants fans, that's why I believe he does, he's not a fit for the Giants. Other teams, take your shot. As a 4-3 defensive end, take your shot. I wouldn't do it in the first at all, but that's just me. But for the Giants, say, say he's, he's playing defensive end uh, in a 4-3. That's fine. He can line up right here. Now, if you're playing 3-4 outside linebacker, uh, you're probably standing right here. You're standing right here. You have someone like Leonard Williams around here. So if you have someone like Leonard Williams around here, you don't have the space to try to make these moves inside that he's pretty decent at. You don't have the space to do that. So I just don't see where he fits. So if you made it this deep into the video, I'm calling you a D6 squad member. If you're a D6 squad member, you got to hit that subscribe button. You got to turn on that notification bell. And listen, I make all kinds of content for NFL teams. So if you're not a Giants fan, don't worry. I'll cover your team. If I'm not covering your team, let me know and have a good one.